What happens when you get into debt? Get out now. Come back with a police officer. Oh, you calm down. And you can't. I haven't got any money. Or won't pay it back. Get off on my property. In this series, we meet the people who are losing their homes. Hello, would you like to open the door? I've got 24 hours. Find somewhere else to go. Their cars. Can you pay this yes or not? I have a go with you now. I'm no going to take your cars. And their possessions. Can't afford to pay the rent, but £700 telly. We meet the people who are owed money. Just got taken advantage of, big time. And the people whose job it is to collect it. I don't want to touch that. Don't panic. Because when you can't pay, they'll take it away. We'll start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. You pay me, and then I'll start. According to figures from the Ministry of Justice, nearly 40,000 tenants had their homes repossessed in 2013. Clapton, East London. High Court enforcement agents Paul, Steve and Ben are evicting a tenant and her two small children from their rented flat. Evictions at the moment is, is the growth industry. So we're now doing probably 20 to 25 evictions every week. So I think we're only seeing the start of an avalanche of evictions. The tenant has lived in the property for four years. No rent has been paid for six months, and the tenant now owes over £7,000. The High Court writ means the agents have the power to evict the tenant immediately. Good morning. Yeah. I'm High Court enforcement, and you've come to repossess the property today. Can I make a quick call? Make a call. She hasn't paid any rent. Gosh, there's, there's two little ones, really little ones. It's very difficult when there's children involved because you're putting them out on the street through no fault of their own. We can only do as best we can to make sure that their safety and rehoming is done as easy and as quickly as possible. The tenant came to the UK from Italy seven years ago. She has two very young children. And what are you going to do now? Uh, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> don't know yet. Got to go, you know, to the to council and probably end up in a hostel. No. I think this is what, you know, what happened. I'll be the first to admit you prejudge them as a on benefits two kids living the life of Riley. But I mean I was curious and then I spoke to the agent. He said no, she'd been here four years, paid her rent as regular as clockwork, and was then made redundant or otherwise lost a job in November. So she's genuinely fallen on hard times. Hello. Now homeless, the tenant and her children need emergency accommodation. She calls the council and asks Steve to explain the urgency of her situation. They need emergency accommodation if that's within your remit. They will have two hours to get their immediate possessions, what they need for a few days to get together, and then we can make arrangements to come back and they can collect the rest of their stuff. So, Steve, can I interrupt you, sir? But there's a problem. Paul's just spoken with the managing agent and he's about to drop a bombshell. Sorry? This is important. Yeah? This place has been sold and completed today. Oh. It means everything's got to be cleared out by morning. All oh, right, OK. Um, sorry. Yeah? I have a bigger problem. Yeah. This property has been sold. It's been sorry. sold. Yes, <laughs> and... So it has to be emptied today. But it's worse than that. The housing office shuts in just five hours. If she can't clear the flat and get there before closing, she and her children will be out on the street. How much is yours here? Clothes, TV, kids' furniture. 
The tenant has a friend at the flat, but she needs more help. She calls her ex-partner, the father of her two children. I need you here in five minutes. Now look at my arm. The arrival of the enforcement team is a shock, but the tenant did know that her eviction was looming. Now, 10 days ago, I received a letter for a position order, but when I was spoke to the solicitors, it was told to me that this really couldn't happen because they haven't sent me no eviction letters. That was the only one, and even when I was to the council the other day, they told me it's not possible, they're gonna kick you out in, you know, in 10 days. We have discussions every single day with councils. They've told the tenant, there's no need to worry, the bailiffs will come to evict you, but they'll give you six weeks' notice. Well, the, the landlords know that, so they apply to the High Court to get it done sooner. So all the time, their entire ethos is to fob people off and hope they'll go away and be a problem tomorrow or next week. Ten minutes later, the children's father arrives Hello. Hello. to help clear the flat. There seems to be a problem here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you? That's the question. Who are you? These mugs have no rights. Come with me. Come down. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Simple yeah. explanation as to why we changed the lock straight away. So we can't get locked out. I I'm talking with you. You came to help me or what? I came to help you. Then please. 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 You speak to the people who are screaming. I know it's going to happen. Yeah. Calm down. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with the agency with this? Because I'm not going to put up with this anymore. Either you be quiet and comply, or we'll call the police and you'll be doing this from outside. Paul hopes his ultimatum will calm things down. But he knows from past experience, anything can happen. Rent arrears are becoming the fastest growing debt problem in the UK, according to the Money Advice Trust. Stuart McCracken is a High Court enforcement agent, and Ian Taylor, his trainee. You can run, but you can't hide, isn't that right, Ian? They spend their days chasing down debts across the length and breadth of the country. We're here to assess whether they can't pay or won't pay. Yeah, well, I can't pay. If they won't pay, we would have to turn the heat up. This has gone on now for four months. As the top earning agent in his firm, 28-year-old Stuart has been in the business for 10 years. We need to take photos of this place. A busy week can see as many as 200 writs executed. That's the exciting thing about the job, you just don't know what you're going into. You have to let me in, mate. Phone the police. Phone the police. Today, they're in Liverpool. They have a writ to collect on a debt of four and a half thousand pounds. I used to go out with a girl that used to go to uni around here. I think if I'd gone uni, I would have uh, gotten loads of debt and ended the bailiffs after me. <laughs> the debt is for unpaid rent on a residential property. Stuart and Ian are about to serve the High Court writ on the defendant at his newly opened business, a small computer repair shop in a busy residential street. New Era Communications oh, right. Stuart and Ian's High Court powers mean that if the debtor can't pay, they can seize goods to sell at auction to cover the debt. Hey, lads, you're all right. But jobs like these are rarely straightforward. All right, you able to have a quick chat, mate? We're at High Court Enforcement. Just got an outstanding debt, mate. Yeah, of course, no problem at all. The shop is full of computer and electronic equipment. Some of it is owned by the defendant and some by customers who bring in items for repair. How's business going? You all right? Just... Get in there. Right. Total amount outstanding, mate. Needs to be paid today, mate. It's removal of assets. Total amount we got, mate, is 4,724 quid. I've been out of job 
for some time now and I've only been on benefits. I just started work. Even at the moment, I'm even owing my landlord some rent. Right. <laughs> Make some See what you can raise, mate, and then we can take it from there, all right? Actually, I'm not here to put you out of business, you know what I mean? The defendant knows he owes the money, but Stuart and Ian's arrival is still a surprise. Oh, my God, speechless. I never knew they were coming in. I never received any letter. I had all letters going to my old address to be forwarded to my new address and got nothing. The defendant has a young family to support, so the pressure's on to save his business. I want the minimum, like, how much is the minimum? You need to tell me how much you can get. <sighs> no, I don't know. Okay. 300? I can't accept that. It's going to be a removal goods, mate. This is what we survive on. I, whenever I make money, I use it to pay bills. Mm-hmm. Since I can't spend money, I can't, mate. 500 quid's not going to be enough. We'll be looking for at least 1,500 quid. There's no way I can get that. Right. There's no way. At the end of the day, it's going to be removal goods. But it's quarter past one now. I can give it to quarter to two. Oh, and then we can take it from there, all right? Nine times out of ten, within the first 30 minutes, people try to raise the funds. They might say, look, I fund a friend, I fund a few people. I've managed to raise some funds from a business account. But that first 30 minutes is key. Do me a favour, mate, you need to do the inventory. All the PCs, desks, everything, mate. Stuart's writ allows him to take possession of every item that the defendant owns in the shop. If he fails to raise the cash, the goods will be sold to clear the debt. We'll wait till he comes back, see what his offer of repayment is, and then uh, we'll take it from there. If not, we'll start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. Yep. Yeah. The clock is ticking. If the defendant can't raise the money, he'll lose his business. Clapton, East London. High Court enforcement agents Paul, Steve and Ben are evicting the tenant and her two small children from their rented flat. Her ex-partner isn't making life easy. Pops, no I'm not going to put up with this anymore. He decides to take the children out to play. Come on, sweetheart. Go, honey. Don't be scared of the pigs. Go. Class, guys. If someone shouting and raging at me, the thoughts that I have, <clears throat> one of two thoughts, really. The first one is, why don't you shut up? This is getting you nowhere. I was admiring people, police officers in this country, but... What I would actually say to them is, this attitude, sir, is getting you nowhere. May I suggest that if you want to shout and rave, go outside and do it. This is the first kickoff in a hundred repossessions. Oh, I suppose we could put up with it. But this just sharpens it up again. So you now see why we wear bulletproof vests. Mm -hmm. I mean, Steve's OK, cos he's young enough to fight, but I'm not so sure about me. <laughs> <laughs> the tenant has lived in the flat for the last four years, but the flat has been sold and she must empty it today. A friend and two council workers are helping. The stuff that you don't need, we will take and leave it at the children's yeah. centre. How do you decide what to take? Take everything. <laughs> They're all helping and they're trying to get as much as they can done as quick as they can to, to get out, which is uh, quite good, really. You OK? The tenant needs emergency accommodation, but the housing office closes in four hours' time. If she doesn't make it, she and her children are out on the street. Let's go 20 minutes later, the children's father returns. Five. Yeah, we're going to take five. Hey, he's going to fix it also because it's broken. It's broken. Steve spots a chance to smooth relations by fixing the bike. It's supposed to be working, not fixing bikes. 
You might have something in the van. He's going to fix your bike. I'm going to try and fix your bike. He's going to try and fix it. Hello. Because I'm nice. We always try and make things as easy as possible for people once the initial upset has gone. It's always things that cost nothing which makes things easier. And it shows to the defendant that we are actually human and not just there to do one job and that's the end of it. Yeah. Fixed. A happy little baby. Lots of the tenant's belongings are now boxed up and bagged. But there's a problem. The question is, where are you going to put it? You're going to have to arrange storage somewhere. Yeah, I can find some of those, you know. Yeah, that is hard. Probably I can put some stuff in this house. OK. The children's father rents a room in a house two miles away. But neither he nor the defendant have any transport. I'm sorry this is such a bad day for you, but it's unfortunate by day. If it's of help to you, we're quite happy to put stuff in the van and take it. Are you offering your van to just transport, please? Yeah. Make use of it, you can. Okay. Time is slipping away. Yeah, we can get as much as you want in here. OK, baby. Everything's gone quiet and down now. The gentleman accepts what's going on, and he's, he's OK with it all now. So it's the first shock. As I said, first shock. These things happen, and you know it's happening, so what do you expect? What do you expect? So, but it's the first thing. Very nice people. Very nice people. I'm sorry about my mad rage earlier. With everyone's help, just three hours after the enforcement team arrived, the flat is empty. The tenant and her children still have a 30-minute walk to the housing office. We just called them. They said just to go there as soon as we can because they're going to close. She hopes they'll find her and her girls a bed for the night, but they're facing an uncertain future. In Liverpool, Stuart and Ian have seized every item in a small computer repair shop. If the owner can't raise the £1,500 Stuart has demanded, he risks losing his business. We'll see what his offer of repayment is. If not, we'll start unplugging and uh, get things wrapped up for transportation. Yeah. yeah. All the activity in the shop has caught the attention of the local community. I think that's unfair because my man didn't re receive any letter from anybody yeah, to say that he's... And he just turned up and expected to take all his goods. Fifteen minutes later, the defendant has raised some cash and has a plan to raise more. Any joy? Still on but the shop's stock is no longer his to sell. So what's going on with these laptops now? Because these laptops have been seized. You can't, can't remove the laptops, mate. They have to stay here. Yeah, there's no way of getting cash. They, they can be removed, mate. Well, he's well, sending the, the laptops to the owner. Yes. To pay him for work that he's done on it. Yeah. He's going to get at least £200, mm -hmm. right? And that's going to add up to the money he's got mm -hmm. to give to you. Yep. Yeah, it's like he can't do it, mate. It needs to stay here. Of oh, them or something. Receipts of what? The laptops. That they belong to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, if you can get me the receipts that they belong to someone else, that's fine. Come on. Is it all second-hand stuff inside no. here? And sometimes you just take a person's name. You know, it's well, If someone's coming in to repair something, you'd have a job sheet of some sort. If it was no. John Lewis or some other highfalutin or uh, no, or shop, normal PC you shop. can see that this shop, shop is just a little like poor it. shop. Yeah. The man is trying to mm. meet ends together. He's got yeah. his wife and his kids with him. Yeah, that's fuck. I'm trying to make things. I know, I know, I know. But you got to see it from our point of view, okay? We've already seized assets, okay? Until you prove to me they do not belong to the shop or belong to you, they have to stay here. Stuart fears that the defendant is trying to remove the most valuable items from the shop. 
If I don't want to use travel with them, then you just sort it out in one go, boom, get paid and just, just take the two laptops. Are, are you to deal with the debt? No. Are you going to make a payment towards the debt? No, but make... I'm trying to give you a, a I don't need any. I, I don't need any advice. I'm don't... trying to look after the mates here, yeah. the same man. I understand that. Yeah. Well, no, you don't, because obviously, okay. by the way, you're being now. He's trying to pay the debt and you're making it yeah. ten times harder. How am I making it ten times harder? Because you say now, go and sell the two laptops now. How, how do I know there's one laptops that can come go. back? You can be yeah. flexible, That's can't right. you? I am being very flexible by the fact that uh, we're, we're not taking anything out of the shop at the moment. But you might, you might have a right here if they try to do that. And mm. You might have to call the police in. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the job you're dealing with an audience that is fully against you. It, it does happen. But we need to be quite stern as well and explain to them that this is what we're here to do. I'm here to do a job, right? That's why you're doing yeah, a job, I'm yes. I'm here to do a job, yeah. I'm not going around in circles with this conversation. I've already told you it's been seized. The defendant's friends come up with a solution. What if I do that, you do that with me? There's a little song. I've only got one of myself now. You can give me a pack on the weekend, though. I've got my own this weekend. Money. This is what you got to do, down here. You know what I mean? We look after each other, down here. That's what it's about, looking after the community. Loans from the defendant's friends push the total to £830. It's not the £1,500 Stuart asked for, but he's prepared to strike a deal. You can get to the grand. You can get to £1,000, can't you? I know you are. I know you are. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. So we'll scan that ground together, and then see. Look, look how much he's tried to get the thousand pound together. Can we go on a realistic payment arrangement? All right. So scan that sorted. All right. This has been difficult, but I'm still working on the cash, and cash is still coming in. We should be able to get a payment plan arranged because there is money coming in, there is money going out. If we empty the shop, there's going to be no more business, which means no more money. So we've got to keep this business alive so we can generate some sort of income for the client. 20 minutes later... Have you got the full amount? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Have you, have you got it? Yeah, I'll get it counted out. The defendants got the cash. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's done, mate. Done. £1,000 in cash that we've received. Yeah. But it just shows that he must be a well-respected person within the area, um, and it shows that if he does struggle, he's got mates that can back him up, and which is <laughs> what we all need. I wish I had mates like that. Stuart calls the office to arrange a payment plan with the claimant. I need to know um, how much he's willing to accept on a monthly basis. They agree £150 a month, to clear the remaining three and a half thousand pounds. OK, any issues at all, just give us a quick ring. All right, no problem. See you later. Okay. See you later. Long see us later. I'm happy. I got more than I expected. If one is doing being good to others, definitely the watch is back. I'll survive, yes. <laughs> I will. I will. High Court enforcement agents Paul, Steve and Ben are in an exclusive area of Surrey. Look at these houses. They have a writ instructing them to collect a staggering £500,000. You could probably buy 400 handbags with that and possibly get some for your wife as well. <laughs> the High Court has awarded half a million pounds in damages following a dispute between four family members and a former employee who claimed she was missold a business. The judge ruled in the former employee's favour, but the family has not paid up. They won't be pleased to see us. The enforcement team is going to the home of the four defendants. Their aim is to collect payments or seize assets to cover the damages. Oh, my good God. Oh, that solves that problem. McLaren's mine. No, I'm taking that. Age as preference. But this job is not going to be as easy as they think. If we park across one gate, you'll put a chain around the other.
When we go to a job, we, we look for the assets, and it's the assets that actually focus people. They don't want to lose their prize koi car or their prize car. Those sort of things focus their mind to saying, look, OK, we can pay this, or we, at least we can start paying it. Seized. I've seized it first. Have you seized these two as well? Yeah. I don't think... No one's in. ..there's anybody in. It's simple, really. You seize all the cars. If we wait for two hours, we can take them. Yeah. The enforcement team must give the defendants two hours to pay up. If they don't settle within that time frame, any seized assets can be removed. The clock is ticking. What was it? It's a McLaren. A McLaren? Oh, right. OK. I'd say about three, four hundred grand. It's not only expensive, it's rare one of only 375 in the world. But if it's on a lease or higher purchase agreement, the team can't take it. With no guarantee that any of the vehicles can be used to pay off the damages, the enforcement team must hunt for more assets to seize. Careful. There's a dog round here, I'm yeah. going to be cross. Good luck. Steve looks for an unlocked door. If he finds one, he can legally enter the house to seize possessions. Did they pay outright for it? Ben rings the car dealership to do a bit of detective work. All right, then. He bought it two weeks ago. No access at all, I'm afraid. I'm too old for this. <laughs> the enforcement team must now wait until the two-hour deadline is up. 30 minutes later, one of the four defendants named on the writ arrives. Ben breaks the news that he's here to collect damages of over half a million pounds. You owe them £518,750. The, the judgment's still in process? No, the judgment's been processed. It's been awarded and now yeah. it's been transferred to the High Court. Right. And we're here to collect on it. Oh, right. I, yeah. Let me speak to my husband. Okay. But the defendant has other plans. Sorry. Yeah, by all means. Good morning, sir. We're High Court Enforcement. The defendant's solicitor is applying for a stay of execution another court order that could stop this enforcement action being carried out. Well, yeah, but it hasn't been stayed yet and we're here to execute it. So unless it's actually stayed as we speak... Paul calls the claimant's solicitor to check if the order has been granted. So I've had their solicitor on, on the phone to me from abroad. He's saying they've applied to the Court of Appeal. That's right, but they, they haven't got the stay of execution. No, that's fine, so nothing's changed. We're still rolling. OK, I've spoken to our instructing solicitor. There is no stay of execution, so nothing has changed. The warrant is still live and active. The defendants have failed to persuade Paul to stop carrying out the writ. The enforcement team arrived at the property one hour ago. Now the defendant has just 60 minutes to prove that the vehicles don't belong to her or the other defendants. Otherwise, they'll be removed. All um, the cars are not... Uh, they, you won't be able to take them. This but is... we will take them. We take them and then people produce the documents. So if, I, if you get the documents now, you yeah, can't take them? That's right. Where's the handle? Have we tried to open it? An hour later, Paul's deadline for the defendant to produce the documents is up. He calls a towing company. We now want the McLaren, Mercedes and uh, Discovery picked up ASAP. The prestige cars, worth several hundred thousand pounds, are about to be taken away. Always locked and loaded and we're just about to fire.
High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and trainee Ian Taylor are chasing down a debt in the Cotswolds. But Stuart's concerned about the background to this case. Two previous bailiffs have been here before and uh, they've collected nothing from him. No assets seized or anything there? No. Let's go have a look and uh, see what this guy's got in store for us. The man named on the writ is an unemployed decorator. The debt, owed to a law firm, started out at £1,500, but has now risen to over £3,000. Sadly, the longer a debt goes on for, the more it's, the more it's going to cost you in the long term. So the, the key element is to try and get it resolved as quickly as possible. Stuart and Ian's writ empowers them to seize goods to sell at public auction if the debt isn't settled today. Let's see which house it is. It's the one with the massive Winnebago outside. Someone's going to be camping out tonight. Hello there. Hello. We're after Richard Hobbs. Hello, mate. Hello. Richard, is it? Yeah. Richard. Mr. McCracken, doing, High Court yeah. Enforcement. Here to collect three thousand one hundred and seventy pounds. I, I, I haven't got any money. I, I don't, right. I'm waiting for some checks to clear. You've already been around once before. Yeah, I've changed my phone number. I've been, I've been trying to get hold of you, but I can't. Right. I've, lost your, I've lost my phone. Right. So I haven't got your numbers. You don't know our numbers no. at all from any paperwork that we've left you. I haven't got right because okay. I moved out and I've only so just recently. So moved what's back. happened about this balance? But I want to pay it off. I want to do it like monthly. Yeah. But what I said. You I promised to do, a lump sum. I did promise a lump sum, but the person that was meant right. to pay me didn't because I was meant to get a cheque, right. but it bounced. Right. People will throw every excuse in the book. I mean, I imagine it's panic reactions most of the time. We've turned up, they're possibly going to lose their belongings. So it's learning to just kind of pick out the genuine ones from the lies. Any payment in full, mate, or we're taking this? That ain't mine, that's my dad's. All right, you need to prove that. Go and get the log book. Hold on. All right. Not that. Yeah, we've got a documentation there. That's my husband's name and address there. Uh... OK, no problem. They've shown us documentation that this belongs to uh, the father. It doesn't actually belong to the defendant. So, sadly, it's something that we can't take. I've got a feeling this will probably cover the debt. Stuart must find another way to collect the cash. He turns his attention to inside the house. Nothing in here that belongs to me. I literally moved back. Only my clothes. I moved back two days ago. I own nothing in this house. Yeah. I've been for the first time. I was split up with my missus five weeks ago. I was living in my car up until about two days ago when my mum said, just come home. Now this. <laughs> Can't get much worse, can it? <laughs> Anybody tell you, I did split over my girlfriend and mm -hmm. left four kids in I mean, at, at the end of the day, mate, this has gone on now for four months. Right. If you're going to run rings around this... I ain't going to run rings around anybody. I want to pay it off. It's just... Yeah. Do what you need to do. You need to find some money, mate. People think if they don't have any money, they think that's it. We'll just walk away. But uh, it's far from that. It's working with them to see what they can do to raise some funds. I might be able to get you 100 quid right now. No, I'm not interested in that, mate. It's a three and a half grand debt. 300 quid clearing in my account tomorrow. Yeah. It needs to I'm be today, mate, so that's out of the question. Next, I've got a job tomorrow, uh, starting next week, which is another 375. Mm -hmm. But we've heard all this before, mate. In desperation, Richard makes an offer. If you want to take my car, mm -hmm. take my car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already seized that. The Vauxhall? Yeah. Can I get all my stuff out of it? You can get your stuff out of it, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Quite stress free at the moment. I've just been through a massive breakup and I just can't be with any more hassle, really. <laughs> just want to try and stay calm. <laughs> Don't need the stress anymore. Not having the wheels, how's this going to affect your ability to work? Quite a bit, but I get around it. My dad will always give me a lift to work. Richard's mother steps in with a solution. I could probably get you a thousand. Mm -hmm. Would you set up a thousand and then pay me? It'd have to be fifteen hundred. Yeah, give you eleven hundred and Stuart accepts the offer, but there's a problem. I can't get to the bank. I can't drive. Where are you not taking? We're not insured. 
We're not insured. Stuart faces a dilemma. Leave with no cash or let Richard and his mother drive the seized car to the bank. Are you, are you, are you, are you able to take her? No, I'm able to do you, know how, do you know how long you will be? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes, right. Yeah. OK. Please start. Please start. Please start. Yes, it started. Ooh. It'd just be our luck, wouldn't it? They'd be going to go and get the cash for us and the car doesn't start. Stuart's taken a gamble. He has no guarantee that Richard or the car will come back. Have you noticed that they've gone to the bank? Oh, <laughs> yeah, left is the keys. Have you seen front the front door? door? Come and have a look at the front door. You don't leave a door open to two bailiffs. <laughs> Not in a million years. Richard and his mother are back with the cash. Let's see. Oh, she's got an envelope. They hand over the car and keys to Stuart and Ian. Right, I've put your keys back in the ignition because the last thing you want is no Winnebago when you come back, is there? I've managed to get you one page of 100. Right. If I could have a receipt for that. Of course, I'll get a receipt for you, no problem at all. You're right there. Right, OK. Should be a thousand there. Should be a thousand there, OK. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Four, six, eight. Thousand spot on, absolutely spot on. And then you've got the two fifties as well. Richard's mother also takes charge of the negotiations to clear the remaining two and a half thousand pounds. What realistically can we go on? I'm going because honestly, I'm sure you don't want us coming back again. Well, he was. I did say to him, could he offer you twenty pound a week? Because he's on job seekers allowance. Because he's on job seekers allowance. Yeah. When he gets back into work, yeah. that will have to be increased. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the car? Look, he's going to need it for work. Yeah. You can keep the car, because yeah. obviously, if you get back into work, you'll need that. Yeah, so I've been out of work for a while. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do then? Decorating the tires. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to do plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> They've let me keep my car so I can find work, which is very reasonable of them, I think. Um, I'm glad they didn't take my dad's new pride and joy. She's only just bought it. I think I'd have been a dead man walking <laughs> and homeless again. <laughs> take it easy, Richard. See you later. It's the end of the day. It's Stu and Ian, isn't it, on the road? The A-team again. The A-team, the bounty hunters. Ow! You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Yeehaw! High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and Steve's son Ben are on a particularly difficult job in Surrey. They're at the property of a family who recently lost a High Court battle. The result, they've been ordered to pay damages of over half a million pounds. What was it? It's a McLaren. I'd say about three, four hundred grand. It's over two hours since the team arrived at the house, but the defendants have failed to pay. Now they'll face the full force of the team's high court's powers. Tow trucks are on their way to remove the seized vehicles. And Ben has more bad news for the defendant. I must also inform you that it's just gone up another £35,000. What has? The debt. Why? Because of the new regulations, if you don't pay when we're here within two hours, 7.5% goes on top. It's not just the 35 k Court fees, interest and VAT push the final figure to an eye-watering £617,000. The total sum outstanding is 617,742. So will you just keep adding? No, this is it now. That is the fee. But this is what it is, I'm afraid. So that's yours. Things aren't about to get any better for the defendant. 
Paul has now been instructed by the claimant's solicitor to serve another court order. We have a writ which says we've got to collect this or take goods away. The second part is that a charge has been put on the property. If they don't pay the damages, the defendants could be forced to sell their home. So it's quite a serious situation. But there's one more weapon in the enforcement team's armoury. The impact of bankruptcy on an individual is a serious issue. Their credit cards are stopped, their bank accounts are, are frozen, and the turmoil it would wreak on their business lives is pretty disastrous. I must also tell you that I'm also serving you with a statutory demand, which in 21 days you can be made bankrupt if the full amount is not paid. Three hours after the enforcement team arrived at the property, the first tow truck arrives. The three cars are about to be lifted. We're just going to carry on until we get the... Until we get anything we have to carry on, I'm afraid. Wait, can you not wait five no, We've waited no. three hours. We have to draw a line. The defendant is still frantically trying to prove the cars don't belong to her or the other defendants. Five Look, minutes. Madam, you've had three hours. That's How long will you wait? Well, we won't. Yeah. The defendants have just seven days to prove that the cars belong to someone else, or they will be sold at auction to help pay the damages. With a charge on their home and the threat of bankruptcy, if they don't pay the £617,000, they're teetering on the brink of ruin. The object is to focus people's attention. We've come along, but we just knocked the chocks out. 